Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Steve Larson! How you guys doing? Good, good, good. My goal here, and this is super key, I wanna teach you guys how to create content like a marketer, not a content creator. It's really easy to just make stuff, right? But I need to make it with a purpose, and if a marketer's role is to deliver things to the market, how can I create content and podcasts and all the stuff that we talk about in a manner that still helps deliver the offer to the market, rather than just make noise? That's not what my object is. And you have to know that with this, there's very different methodologies in content creation. Um, I was kind of trained under the method of Russell, where he came in and just said, just be consistent and just talk and document the journey. You're gonna get a chance to hear though from Peng Jun, who's very much on the other side of the same fence though, where it's like, hey, I'm gonna go create content. I'm gonna batch a ton of it in one shot. And it's gonna be highly keyword researched. So I'm only gonna go make a bunch of content that I know will go crazy and rank. It's, it's for the purpose of being consistently every day published. I'm not really that way. And it's fine to have different styles. My way is to come in and try to make each episode like a sermon, right? Sales Funnel Radio is like, how many of you guys have to listen to that episode a couple times sometimes, right? And I do that on purpose because I am really trying to explore an idea. And so that's the way I treat my publishing and my content. Neither is correct, they're both fine. But that's why I wanted Peng Jun to come in because I follow much more of the Russell's, let me document the journey, let me call the shot and you guys follow me along the way, let me document all the lessons. Peng Jun over here, what he's gonna teach you to do also is, hey, start with something, what's your keyword in that market? Let's go long tail and find all the keywords for it and now those are your episode titles. Make sense? Both are fine, both were great. So that's why I wanted him to come in and do this and you guys are gonna get a, quite the deep dive on this today. Sweet? Yeah. This is gonna be so cool. All right. Um, this has uh, gotten to the spot now that I am first a content marketer and then Steven, <laughs> okay? Like, my identity with content creation is so strong. Like, uh, Gary Vee actually teaches that as well. Every one of you guys should think of yourselves as a media company now. You're all a media company and then an individual. <laughs> it's that strong, okay? If you choose to talk, people are going to know you're there. If you don't, no one knows you're there, okay? Um, so let's dive on in. Okay, so the first time Russell ever said, you need to publish, I was at the track. And uh, it's me on the right there jumping in the helicopter and we were, anyway, <coughs> we were at the track and we run it around and uh, Russell Brunson, I at least knew who he was at this point, and we'd be doing sprints and they'd be like, you got six minutes to run a mile, then a four minute break, then a six minute mile, then a four minute break, and we just do rotations of that. And, um, which sucked and what actually ended up hurting my calf. <laughs> um, but basically, Russell periscoped, you guys remember periscope? Like ages ago, right? <laughs> um, he was periscoping and I go and I hear my little phone chirp and I run over there and I check it out and it's Russell going, all of you need to publish. And I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I will never do that. Thank you, no thank you. Then at Funnel Hiking Live, the very first day, he did this presentation called um, uh, Progression of the Expert or something like that. Right? And he's like, all of you need to publish. And I was like, no. Right? <laughs> then finally, while I was sitting next to him and he was chatting, he was doing all this stuff he, at, at ClickFunnels HQ right there. That was the, they're packing up his desk when we were finally going to the new office. And he kept saying, all of you need to publish. And I had been watching him too. And I was like, why is the SaaS CEO of like a, I mean, already at that point, it was like a hundred million dollar company. Why is he spending all this time doing this? Right? And he's like, oh, we need to publish. I was like, there's something to this though. And inside I was still like, no, but I started figuring out I should start really making uh, an effort to go to get this done because it's, it's big enough to see this guy going and do like, it's, why, why is he still, he could outsource this, right? And that's what everyone tries to go do with it, but he wasn't. And he'd be every day jumping on Facebook live. What's up everybody, it's Russell. Jump over to his podcast. What's everyone, it's Russell. Jump over to his blog. What's up everyone, it's Russell, right? <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> and I started realizing that there was a pretty major reason for all this stuff. And the more that he started speaking, he had this way of controlling traffic. And you'll start to see, 
I was about to ask, who's read the traffic secrets? <laughs> who's read traffic secrets? <laughs> yeah, a couple. Yeah, hey, how's it going, guys? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, listen to the reading. You'll notice that those who can control traffic, those are the ones who make it long term in the game. And that's what he was doing with the content. That's why this is such a big deal. And I want to focus on you creating content as a marketer, not a content creator. Okay, <clears throat> so I started my podcast. And I'm bringing this up here so you guys can see how I started it. Uh, about two or three weeks ago, there's a guy who was getting a little huffy with me on, uh, on a thread. And, uh, and he was like, he was like um, how much money have you spent to get your podcast going? I was like, I didn't spend any money at all. He said, well, how much money have you spent total? I was like, nothing ever at any point have I spent a dollar in ads to promote the show. He goes, oh, so you just had a major following. I had no following. I hustled the crap out of that first episode and got 40 downloads. Okay? No following at all. Okay. You guys feeling this? There was no following, no group, no ads. There's no shout outs. I didn't do anything. It was completely 100% organic the whole time. And that's why I'm trying to share with you guys some of these things I've done to get it big um, because it wasn't a lot and it was actually quite simple. And it will actually include a lot of what we went through yesterday. The who, market, market selection, market positioning. And a lot of my content and show creation is under that lens, which is why it's so rare and unique. And, and um, it's for a market, not just anybody. Okay. So both shows grew organically. Uh, they're about to cross a million downloads, which is awesome. I know other shows have far more than that, but frankly, I don't care. Remember, I'm not trying to get 14 million buyers of this new tech next year. It's like, no, no, no. The mar my market eligible buyer is much smaller than that, which is good, right? Remember, remember us talking about that yesterday? Yeah? Okay, so this is why that's important. Okay, <coughs> so I'm about to close Sales Funnel Radio. It's going to end. The show's going to stop. Um, I have like two or three more episodes left, and then it'll be done. And the reason is because I'm trying to tie it off with a little bow and say, hey, this is my journey from completely broke episode zero, right, to five million in, in, uh, in three years of the show going, right, and uh, documenting the leave and the growth and all that stuff. And I think it'd be really cool to kind of do it that way. There's another reason, though. You have to understand that, um, you guys remember yesterday we were chatting a lot about um, how ClickFunnels grew and they first started out of what market? Websites, Websites right? They started out of the website market. And uh, then as they started taking over some of the mentalities of the website market and started getting really big, they leveled up. Now they went to uh, general entrepreneurship and that was their market, bigger market. Okay. And then uh, as I started getting bigger, now they're in like general marketing, right? Huge, huge, huge market. And what I started noticing was that they were trading up markets once they were a big fish in a little pond. And as I started realizing that pattern and started noticing this, I started realizing that who would listen to Sales Funnel Radio? The title of it, Click Funnels, right? You don't know what a sales funnel is. I mean, it's, it's the term in itself is techno babble, unless you know and you're in the know. So as I started realizing that, I realized click funnels, sales funnel radio. I'm not trying to be the sales funnel king. Russell is. I shouldn't be the sales funnel radio guy. They should be. But wait a second. I've now positioned myself and I've gone and grabbed a little bit, you know, an audience now, kind of become a little bit of a big fish or one of the bigger ones in a smaller pond called ClickFunnels. What if I use that to springboard to a larger entrepreneurship market? That's why we're, we're closing it. And I'm using the same group as audience and strategies to go and launch into a larger entrepreneur market with the show Pursuit of Profit. Okay, so the Pursuit of Profit show will be a side-by-side -side show like Impact Theory. That's where we're building the studio right now. So I'm going to fly in all these people and we're going to chat about how they got rich. And um, I'm psyched about it. It'd be awesome. But now, what does the messaging pursuit of profit, who does that attract? Broader than click funnels, right? A little bit broader. And I'm using that to springboard to a larger base. And once again, kind of like fight as a little guy, but bigger, way harder to do if I just started there instead, right from the get go. Does that make sense? Okay, content has the power to put you in places you, it would be very, very hard for you to get into. And that's, that's actually why we're doing it. So, okay, so content is actually also the fuel of the internet cash model. Okay, it's, it's my ads team has a very, very hard time making my funnel successful, even with Facebook ads, as great as they are, without me publishing. Okay, so I go and I'll launch a funnel and I'll put stuff out there and I'll make episode, 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 episode. And honestly, I'm making episodes about all the objections that my sales letter didn't have room for me to fit. 
Get that? All those extra objections we're going over yesterday, those are great for me to make a mini Epiphany Bridge script story episode about with a little call to action back to it. Then we run ads to that. And it's a pre-frame. Does that make sense? We get way more sales that way. Way more sales that way. My best buyers always come from content, not ads. Okay? So your goal, uh, I want you to, in this process, uh, identify what your own false beliefs are as if you were a customer. Okay, so real quick, what, what are some of the challenges you guys have with publishing? What are your hang-ups? Consistency. Consistency, okay. Time, yeah, the time part, absolutely. What to publish, topics. I'm not an expert. Not an expert. That was, that was one of my uh, biggest ones, actually. Confidence in front of the camera. I don't know why this isn't working. Yeah, we'll just talk. <laughs> um, uh, confidence in front of the camera. That was one of the, my biggest ones as well. That's actually why the first episode of Sales Funnel Radio was an interview and not me, because I don't know what to say. <laughs> so anyway, what else? What else is like, the biggest hang-up? Strategy behind it. Strategy behind it, 100%. The story, the story consistent. You know what's funny is that I didn't know what I wanted to do till episode 240. Yeah, I had no idea. Okay, I'm gonna share with you guys some pretty interesting things about this. And under the context of the show, I found Steve J. Larson, capitalist pig, offer guy. It was actually in the show that I started because I saw how you interacted with it. And the market guided me in what to go create for it. That's one of the biggest powers. That's the other reason I get so huffy when someone's like, I'm not gonna publish. I'm like, oh gosh, you better have really deep pockets for ads or a major following already. I don't know any other option. Anyway, okay, so today's layout, I'm gonna walk through with you guys again, more of the purpose of content. I'm gonna teach you guys a little more about how to find your voice. Um, as I've, you know, this is, uh, this is one of those big topics I talk about in the, 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 the FAT event a lot, the Funnel Hackathon event. And this is always one of the biggest questions. It was one of mine as well. We'll go through how to position the show. That matters as much as anything else. Same thing with like show mechanics. That's actually when we'll dive into um, how I run the show itself. So you can see like, uh, yeah, basically how I run the show. Um, episode layout. This is what I do in every single episode, how I come up with my ideas. And then finally into a little bit more of launching. Now I'm going to go quick. You guys cool with that? I'm going to go quick because uh, Peng Jun's gone soon and I have about uh, two hours and 45 minutes and... Oh baby, we got, we got a lot. It's an hour less than I thought I had, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going here, thank you very much. Okay, so first I'm gonna keep going, then Peng Jun will be on at about one. And um, yeah, let's dive on in. And like I said, he goes more under the context of, I'm gonna batch, I, I, there's nothing against, I have nothing against um, batching a ton of content at once for the next like three, four, five, six months. I can't do that though. I just can't. I try, the way I do it where I'm trying to have like a sermon every single episode, it just doesn't make sense for me. So I choose to not do it that way. And so understand that sometimes like there's, there's, there's fact and then there's opinion, right? And uh, I'm gonna teach you guys a lot of the facts of it, but also tell you when something is an opinion of mine. And so I never really go beyond six weeks ever uh, ahead of, of batching content. I just can't think of cool, crazy, awesome ideas that quick. So, uh, but then Peng Jun will come in and say, hey, here's some really cool long-term keywords and I'm gonna go create three months of video in three days, right? And that's fine also. John Lee Dumas does the same kind of thing. He batches, I think, a month or two in one, um, at the top of every month, yeah, every two days at the top there. So you can just figure out how it works for you. And there's no right answer with it except for consistency. That is the right answer, okay? Um, 